Larry Gibbon. Well, earlier I spoke to Italy's finance minister, Pier Carlo Paduan, and I asked him what he made of one of today's front pages, the one parading what it called the UK's Brexit mutineers. That language is a sign of a very emotional debate, which should not be so emotional and more rational, but this is common to other countries as well. I can tell you that I see two kinds of reactions in Europe with respect to Brexit or after Brexit. One is that the process of European integration and institution building is accelerating indeed after Brexit, not decelerating, number one. Number two, on the opposite side, one could uh, see uh, events such as what is happening in Catalonia as a, another country's Im imitation of what the Brexit uh, event has, has, has given. The fact that in some parts of Europe there might be a desire for subtracting rather than adding to European integration. Uh, I do hope that European integration can make further progress. It needs to do so and this would help also, as I said, finding a good partnership with those who decided otherwise. So what you're saying is that the, 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 the spectre of Brexit has actually done more to unite Europe than to divide it at the moment? Uh, I don't know whether it has done more, but certainly it has accelerated the political process towards more stronger European institution building. You mentioned Catalonia. I mean, Catalonia is a huge problem, not just for Spain, but for the European Union. You yourself had votes in Lombardy and Veneto. They weren't for full independence, but there are the same stirrings of great autonomy going on. How is Italy going to cope with this, and how does Europe need to cope with a problem like Catalonia? Uh, well, it needs to show to citizens in different countries and regions that Europe is part of the solution, not part of the problem. And Europe has been facing good, big challenges, including creating more jobs, growing more, which is happening, but also dealing with challenges such as massive mi migration and refugee flows, and also security issues. These are challenges that require a European response. But Europe doesn't want to be part of the solution. They don't want to go anywhere near the Catalonia problem at the moment, do they? Well, uh, there are, of course, institutional limits to which uh, European Union and Catalonia can have a dialogue. But in, respective, in addition to the institutional aspect, there are substantial apps aspects dealing with what European citizens feel Europe is providing to them or not providing. You've got an election next year. Mr Berlusconi is trying to make a comeback. You've got the Five Star Movement as the most popular party at the moment. And this is not a recipe for stability. Uh, it is, well, Italy is getting its own share of populism, which is something that is affecting all countries around Europe, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what the country needs is to continue on this uh, road to stability and to patient day-by-day policy making, which is producing very good results, as the very recent releases of GDP growth are showing. David Davis has suggested that the City of London should be exempt from uh, the ban on the freedom of movement post-Brexit that, in other words, workers in the City of London will be able to come and go as they please. This is in an attempt to keep some of the big banks here. Would you agree with that suggestion? Well, that's an odd solution to another problem. We have to be very transparent, and rather than uh, tailoring up specific uh, arrangements for specific sectors or specific zones in, in the UK to deal with the EU, EU once Brexit is completed, uh, I understand the purpose and the meaning and the, the, the rationale behind. I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm, I agree with the method, but I would have to look at the details. Does it sound like having your cake and eating it? Yes, it's like, like uh, saying we have a free trade arrangements, but up to a point or for just for some zones. You would have the power, I mean, Italy would have the power to veto this idea. Would you veto it? Well, I think that we need to find commonly agreed solutions in Europe. It's not a question of vetoing, it's a question of finding together solutions that will work for both the UK and the EU in the future. Mr. Padron, thank you very much. Thank you.